Φίλοι, σήμερα είναι 7 Μαΐου 2023. Χθες, 6 Μαΐου, προσκλήθηκα ως κεντρικός ομιλητής στην επιχειρηματοπολιτιστική έκθεση που διοργάνωσε ο Ελληνοσουηδικός Σύνδεσμος στην Στοχόλμη με θέμα «Η ελληνική γλώσσα, ένα διαχρονικό πανεπιστήμιο που συνέχει τους Έλληνες και πολιτίζει την Ιφίλιο». Την διεξήγαγα στα Αγγλικά επειδή παρευρέθησαν και αρκετοί Σουηδοί και ένας που δεν γνωρίζω πολύ καλά την ελληνική, και κατόπιν την παρουσία σας σε έμετρο ελληνικό λόγο ως σύνοψη. Και θα ήθελα να μοιραστώ την ομιλία μαζί σας, αγγλιστή, και αργότερα θα την προωθήσω και στην C οθόνη, λεγόμενο YouTube. Αρχίζω λοιπόν. Greetings to all my Hyperborean Greek and Swedish brothers and sisters attending the first Greek Swedish Expo. Our forefathers used the adjective hyperborean, super northerly, hyperborios, to refer to the golden-haired sun god Apollo, who retreated to the far north of Europe during the winter months and returned to Greece in spring, rejuvenated to shed incomparable quality of light, which in turn produced an incomparable culture and language that even to this day enlightens like the sun. I also stress in, um, brothers and sisters when I refer to Europeans because all European cultures are bound by the influential dictates and values of the Hellenic or Greek, if you like, language. Besides, our home countries may have territorial borders, but the high language we think through comprises an ecumenical home in itself, a home with extended family members to boot. To go back to history, ever since the Roman conquests of Europe, Latin and Greek permeated all the continental languages. By the time of the Renaissance, however, Latin itself had died in its spoken form, but not before giving birth to the Romance languages like French, Spanish, Italian, Romanian, uh, and of course, uh, influenced all the other languages. Uh, but Latin was permeated with thousands of Greek words that it also conveyed to these languages. It had borrowed from Greek. Greek, a tongue that has tenaciously survived amongst its modern speakers today, making it the oldest and only surviving classical tongue in Europe. And if you don't believe me, do ask AI chat uh, what is the oldest surviving language, classical language in Europe. That said, the West to which all belong, is, as a professor of Princeton University named Michael Segru cites, a marriage of the myth of Jerusalem and the reason of Athens. Both myth and reason, however, were conveyed to the West in the Greek language, the former through the New Testament and the uh, latter through the, uh, the survived texts of the Greek philosophers and historians. They say survived because there are thousands of other texts that were, uh, you know, uh, have been lost or were burned in the uh, uh, fire that was set in uh, the Library of Alexandria. After the myth of Israel, though, lost all the power of authority it had enjoyed in the Middle Ages through the Church, with all the holy inquisitions and the witch hunts, the West turned to the reason of Athens through Latin and Greek texts thereby freeing humans from the bonds of religious dogma. Hence, the Renaissance, rebirth of Greek thought, later the Age of Reason, and after that, the Industrial Revolution, which eventually laid the grounds for today's technological world. However, as the Greeks were still under the yoke of the Ottoman Empire at the time when all these changes were happening in Europe, Europeans studied Greek as a dead language and as dead a language as Latin, oblivious to the fact, most of them, uh, that there were still speakers of Greek living on the planet. After the Greek War of Independence, however, European scholars of ancient Greek streamed into the country to discover that they could read the Greek newspapers and that even the most uneducated peasants of Greece spoke an evolved, albeit simpl simplified version of what these uh, men of letters had so passionately studied in their universities. 
They were enamored with the Greek myths, and to them, modern Greek was a linguistic treasure trove, which, for instance, enabled them to envision the mythical Nereids, Nereides, as we say here in Greek, who lived in streams and fountains as daughters of the water god Nereus, 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 when they heard a modern Greek order Neron, the adjective used in antiquity to mean fresh, as in Neron Hydor, Neron Idor, fresh water. Or hear them refer to a young man as Neros, meaning one who is flowing fresh in life. Astounded they were to hear the word psari to mean fish, as an ancient Athenian used opsarion to also mean fish when referring to his evening meal, which was normally fish, ichthys, the main word for fish. At this point, one may think all that is fine for classicists and history buffs, but what is the point in studying Greek today? How can Greek contribute to humanity through language today? Well, for one thing, uh, if one were to omit the Greek words from any European tongue, that language would cease to function in a civilized state. There would be no words for medicine, math, poetry, music, uh, heroism, harmony, politics, education. Speaking of education, there would be no word and therefore no institution for school. Okay, and so what? One may persist. Uh, and he could continue by rightly adding that these words are here to stay anyway, whether Greek or not, and that there is no point in dwelling in the origin of these words or in the past to progress in modern life. On the contrary, my friends, there is every reason to dwell on every Greek word used by European languages, not so much for uh, its historical content as for its didactics, didaktiki, another Greek word meaning teachings. This is what the Athenian philosopher Antisthenes stressed over 2,000 years ago through his famous quote, Archisophias onomaton episcepsis, the principle of wisdom lies in the study of words. He meant Greek words, of course. So let us go back to the word school as an example of the significance of studying Greek words, something which I stress quite often in my, in my linguistic speeches. It stems from the Greek noun scholi, scholi, which means leisure, time off work. If in modern Greek, it functions in many derivatives, such as scholao, I'm off work, when negated by the prefix a, as in a scholume, uh, it means I am not relaxing, but busying myself. So, of course, in the minds of most, school is anything but leisure, because having forgotten what the word has to teach, educational centers today are anything but schools. However, if we reassess its meaning, we might be guided to understand that learning should be made to be looked upon as a privileged leisure activity. It would teach us that children should not be made to sit behind a desk without first venting their bursting with energy hormones through physical activities, whether through sport or a series of chores, being taught responsibility at the same time. The leisure of sitting down to learn can only be appreciated if it is contrasted with physical fatigue and discipline. And you may have heard that many Japanese schools are implementing this already, and rightly so. Another Greek, another Greek word that reigns supreme throughout the globe and has a lot to teach is the word for home, which is ikos or oikos for those of you that study ancient Greek through the Erasmian pronunciation. Although modern Greeks also use the word spiti to mean home from the Latin hospitium, lodge, the word ikos has been combined with other Greek particles and words to express family as in ikogenia from ikos and genos, genus meaning birth or lineage, line of uh, descent. This is the word which produced genes, genealogy, genome, generator, and generation, and many others. In that sense, the Greek word for family, ikogenia, literally means the lineage of people produced, generated in one's home or in one's country. 
and as home has to be managed in an orderly fashion so that no member will go hungry or unsheltered, the Greek language bequeathed to the world a word to live by, which is none other than economia, economy, from again, from ekos, home, and nomi, nomi meaning distribution, putting things in order, management, classifying. When I ask economists, university graduates, to give me a definition of the word economy, I'm really saddened to hear most of them simply relating it to finances. Can you imagine how much safer and fairer our world would be if we abided by the literal meaning of economy, which is managing our countries, our homes, as we managed our own homes fairly amongst our family members? The suffix nomi as an economy has produced many derivatives in Greek, such as nomos, meaning law, that is to say, the distribution nomi of justice. Unless you know Greek, therefore, you cannot make its mytho-conceptual connection to the word-renowned goddess Nemesis, who, whose name is a derivative of nomi, nemin, who distributes just punishment to those not abiding by the nomos, the law, by mismanaging the greater home of their country or that of humanity. Without knowledge of Greek, one does not fully understand words like astronomy, which refers to the science that classifies the order of the celestial bodies of our universe. Uh, without ecos, we have no word for ecology, uh, and so on and so forth. Through Greek thought and language, therefore, one can look at the mind-boggling disorder of chaos, as we say in Greek, chaos, meaning the gaping void, look it right in the eye and try to make sense of it by understanding that our existential role as intelligent beings is to act as the uniting force of Eros to, out of chaos, produce cosmos, a word that literally means orderly arrangement, decoration, beauty, jewel, an orderly world. We can still discern the meaning of beauty and the jewel of the word cosmos in its derivative cosmetics. So friends, I could forever continue listing examples of the stupendously poetic power of Greek to reproduce itself infinitely, coining words for every new invention or concept through a, a plasticity found in no other tongue on the planet. But infinity takes forever, so I will close my English presentation with a word whose prefix has produced the Greek verbs eroto, to ask, erevno, to research, and erethizo, to stimulate. The word is none other than the supreme force that I mentioned earlier, the uniting force, eros, who stimulates minds and bodies to seek perpetual connection with what is desired physically and intellectually. Hence the word erotic, borrowed from Greek in other tongues, all bit used in a simplistic, in a very simplistic and a narrow sense. And now for the Greek speakers amongst you, I will recapitulate what I have imparted to you in Greek, in Greek verse, in fact, by using a combination of ancient, puristic and modern forms of the language in homage to the timelessness of Hellenic from the age of Homer the present to infinity. And I do this to instill in you the sense of responsibility to keep it alive. For we do live in an age which is erasing memory despite our technological advances. It is erasing historical memory, pretty much the way it was suppressed in the dark ages in the name of God. Now we have the God of technology overshadowing everything that has to do with culture. Uh, until the Renaissance, as I said, rebirth, revived reason through the study of Greek thought, and then the Middle Ages were overshadowed by the Age of Reason, as I mentioned earlier. So here it is, enjoy the musicality of the tongue that debarbarized the West. Elines, elinikou lexilogiu vrithi o planitis, ke homos ienies dismonithikan udiston synoditis, ithe i glosa mas fotisi ta osa sispironun τον λόγον νου και κάλος που τον άνθρωπο ορθώνουν. 
και ο άνθρωπος ορθώνεται σαν σμίξη με τις λέξεις. Προσδίδουσες συνείδησιν και κάλλιστες με θέξεις. Γιγνώσκοντας ότι ο κόσμος είναι κόσμημα και όχι κάποιος όχλος. Αρίστον συναπάντημα ουκέτι εσμο κόχλος. Του οίκου τα γεννήματα γεννώσιν οικογένεια. Την βάση του πολιτισμού, του έθνους πρωτογένεια. Το έθνος γαρ παράγωγον του έθους ήτι ήθους, κοσμίων το απάγασμα και όχι όποιου πλήθους. Ορθή νομή του οίκου σου γεννά οικονομία και αν δικαίως νέμετε, ανθή ισονομία. Εάν ουχή η νέμεσης τα δέοντα θε νέμι, τιμή ορόσα τη μωρά των όποιων παραβαίνει. Ο άνθρωπος ορθώνεται γυγνώσκοντας και ότι σχολείων εστί παράγωγον της σχόλης και όχι πόνου και ως εκ τούτου έπεται του κάματος του γόνου. Άρα ουκέτη δίνασε εκ του σχολείου σχολάσεις εφόσον οι λέξεις λέγεις εσύ εν σχόλη σου να δράσεις και να μάθεις. Συσπυρώσε ο ζητούμενον εστί η καλή έργεια διότι καλός οδηγεί κάθε ορθή ενέργεια. Του κάλους έργων άνθρωποι εισήν όσοι γνωρίζουν τις γλώσσες των τις διδαχές, εσ πράξεις των ορίζουν. Έργων άριστων τιτάνιων, εις εισπήρωσης δυνάμεων, που ενώνουν, συγκεντρώνουν και το κάλος διαμορφώνουν. Της ανάγκης υπηρέτης, του προσύμπαντος συνθέτης, αντιθέτων συμβατών, θείος δέτης των αρμών, ο φάνης έρος φανέ ρώνει και τα δέοντα ενώνει. Νου στο σύμπαν ήλι ψάχνει στην απειρο αστροπάχνη ή να περιβληθεί σε σώμα καθαρόν διάβιας όμα. Πνεύμα νους και ζώσα ήλι διά του έρωτο στην σμήλη ακρεφνός φιλοτεχνούνται και από μουσες δι υμνούνται και το μέλος όν προκύπτει ελληνίδαν γλώσσαν τίκτη. Ονομάζουσα στοιχεία, καταγράφουσα τα θεία. Συσπυρώνει έννοιες, φθόγγους, όρι, δάση, άλση, λόγγους, θαλασσόβρεκτες ακτές, με του λόγου της πτυχές. Ελληνικήν όσοι κατέχουν, εις τον συμπαντικό νου μετέχουν. Ως αν κόρη μνημοσύνης, λόγων πλάθη σοφροσύνης. Υπερβαίνει γαλαξίες, συσπυρώνει τις αξίες, εσ τον άνθρωπο χαράζουν, ύφος ήθος και αργάζουν θεϊκήν αταραξίαν απολώνια πεμπτουσίαν. Όσοι μητέρα ενιών αρμολογούσα γλώσσα, Ελλήνων σύ ορθή φωνή, αρχαιοτά τη ζώσα, την εποχή μας φώτισε, συσπήρωσε τις γνώσεις των μαχητήν φιλόσοφων, όπως αναβιώσεις. Αυτή ήταν η ομιλία μου λοιπόν φίλοι και κατά το τέλος ομιλίας Δέχτηκα ένα ενδιαφέρον ερώτημα από έναν κύριο που είχε παρακολουθήσει μία αντίστοιχη ομιλία από έναν καθηγητή αραβικών, ο οποίος δίδασκε στο Πανεπιστήμιο εκεί και ο οποίος κατάφερε να πείσει τους, α, και τον ίδιο κύριο αυτό με ρώτησε, ότι η πλουσιότερη γλώσσα του κόσμου ήταν η Αραβική επειδή ήταν θεόστατη από τον ουρανό, όπως ισχύρισε ο επιστήμονας αυτός. Με ρώτησε να τοποθετηθώ στο θέμα. Uh, δεν του τοποθετήθηκα αμέσ, άμεσα, αλλά α, εμέσως, uh, λέγοντας ότι η πλουσιότερη γλώσσα στον πλανήτη είναι εκείνη της οποίας εάν τα διαδανειοδοτημένα της λύματα αφαιρόντουσαν από όλες τις εν πολιτισμό γλώσσες του κόσμου, εκείνες δεν θα μπορούσαν να λειτουργήσουν στην σύγχρονη εποχή. Μαντεύστε πώς θα έλεγαν αυτές οι γλώσσες φερειπίν λύματα όπως διαλεκτική, Φιλοσοφία, μαθηματικά, γεωμετρία, μουσική, δημοκρατία, ηρωισμό, τηλέφωνο, οικονομία, αρμονία, γραμματική, τεχνολογία και τόσες άλλες που κατέστησαν τον δυτικό πολιτισμό ως κυρίαρχο και πλέον περιζήτητο από τους ίδιους τους Άραβες, τους Κινέζους και όλους τους υπόλοιπους λαούς της Ιφιλίου. Νομίζω πως η απάντηση θα είναι αποστομωτική. Προς επαλήθευση του παραπάνω, θα μπορούσατε να θέσετε το εξής ερώτημα στην εφαρμογή του 
AI chat. Αυτό το εργαλείο το οποίο βέβαια θα εκτοπίσει πάρα πολλού από την εργασία των, αλλά ωστόσο παίρνει τα στοιχεία που υπάρχουν, όλα τα στοιχεία που υπάρχουν στις πληροφορίε και βγάζει αρκετά ενδιαφέροντα συμπεράσματα. Γράψετε αγγλιστή ή ελληνιστή αν θέλετε. The vocabulary of which language has had the greatest effect on Western thought. Η απάντηση που έλαβα τουλάχιστον εγώ είναι η εξή. The vocabulary of ancient Greek. Αυτοί βέβαια κάνουν το διαχωρισμό ancient Greek. Το Greek είναι διαχρονικό όπως είπαμε, γιατί τις λέξεις χρησιμοποιούμε και σήμερα. The vocabulary of ancient Greek has had a significant and lasting impact on Western thought. Greek has been a foundational language for philosophy, science, mathematics, literature and political theory in the Western world. Many important concepts, ideas and terms from these fields have their origins in Greek. Greek philosophy with thinkers like Socrates, Plato and Aristotle laid the groundwork for Western philosophical traditions. Terms such as logic, metaphysics, ethics, dialectic and syllogism all come from Greek and continue to shape philosophical discourse. In the realm of science and mathematics, Greek words like physics, biology, geometry, algorithm, theorem and axiom have become fundamental to Western scientific and mathematical discourse. Literary terms like epic, tragedy, comedy, lyric and rhetoric derive from Greek and continue to influence literary analysis and criticism. Additionally, Greek political terms like democracy, oligarchy, tyranny, polis and citizen have played a crucial role in shaping Western political thought and systems of governance. Overall, therefore, the Greek language and its vocabulary have had a profound and enduring impact on Western thought, providing a rich foundation for many fields of knowledge and influencing the development of Western civilization, which, of course, has influenced all the other civilizations that are not Western because it seems that the whole world wants to go West. So that was, that was my introductory uh, speech uh, to the in the uh, Greco-Swedish uh, Expo, the first one that was uh, held in Stockholm on the 6th of May 2023. Ευχαριστώ φίλοι, uh, λοιπόν φίλοι μας. Uh, ελπίζω να μοιραστείτε αυτές τις γνώσεις. Uh, είναι στο χέρι μας να διασώσουμε αυτό που έχει περάσει μέσα από τις χιλιετίες, το οποίο είναι το διαμάντι του ποτισμού μας και αυτό που συνέχει όλους τους Έλληνες, την ελληνική μας γλώσσα. Σας ευχαριστώ.